What's up, Bills Mafia? I got your stock up and your stock down following the Bills win over the Cardinals this past Sunday. But before we get to that, let's get to that intro. That means that we punched our ticket to go try to win a Super Bowl, and that's it. We got one game at a time starting at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Love y'all, boys. Love you. Love you. I go to war with every single one of you every game, all right? Here we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. Win. Yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah Please tell me all the bad, never good, till my head full of every single doubt, yeah Please say any negative thoughts, I pop off when I hear people say I cannot I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong, I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost I'ma stay loud, stay proud, never running out, never heading south I'll be spreading out, call it word of mouth, can't put me down, I'll be getting loud you can never doubt, not what I'm about. Have your fucking cloud. It be raining now. I keep making sound. Go another round. Bitch, I'm legend bound. Can't stop me now. You don't wanna fuck with me. A slow burn like a disease. Just tell me that I can and I'll show you things that you couldn't believe. Just tell me. Welcome to the Mafia Sports Report. I am Tommy. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I always forget to tell you. Well, Bills Mafia, week one is in the books. And the Buffalo Bills, whoo, whoo, barely edged out the Arizona Cardinals in Buffalo, 34-28. And uh, yeah, man, it was a little bit too close for comfort. But the Bills got the dub, and that's really that. That's really all that's all that's all that matters, right? That the Bills got the dub. They move on to week two, which is Thursday, right? This Thursday. Uh, you know, not a lot of time to get that rest, but it is what it is. And we're going down to Miami uh to, to face the Dolphins, who, by the way, barely won against the Jaguars. So uh not a lot of teams look hot week one, and that's normal. Uh, and that's why. You know, we got to pump the brakes a little bit. Let's not to be overly concerned that we didn't shred the Cardinals uh, because ultimately we got the dub. And that's, like I said before, that's all we want, right? Um, but I got the stock up and I got the stock down. Uh, and let's get to that. Shout out to Bill's Wire for creating this article, by the way. All right. First up, let's get to it. All right. Stock up, quarterback. Josh Allen, of course. Uh, as mentioned above, Allen was a star of the show for the Bills, and Buffalo may need him to play that like that on most game days if they're going to make it back to the playoffs and beyond. Not only did Allen score four touchdowns, but he did it going 18 of 23, passing for 232 yards and carrying the ball nine times for 39 yards, 4.3 yards per carry. Yeah, uh, he was just, uh, what can I tell you? Uh, Josh Allen is that is that dude, right? Josh Allen is that dude. Uh, that overrated garbage that came out in the offseason is such crap. Stop it, all right? Josh Allen, how do you feel about that, by the way, the overrated? I know I asked you before. I'll ask you again. Okay. <laughs> right, because nobody's buying that shit. All right, nobody's buying that shit. Uh, if you if you are a real football fan, if you are a uh, a, a, a real analyst, uh, then you understand what Josh Allen brings to the Buffalo Bills and what Josh Allen brings to the NFL, which is exciting, fun football. And he bring he puts his heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears, everything onto that field. And that's all that you can ask for from any football player. And he brings it. He brings it every single game. Name me a game where Josh Allen, even if he played bad, didn't bring it, everything he had into that game. You can't. You can't because you're lying. Uh, but anyway, stock up for sure. Stock up. He only made one mistake in that game. Only one, which was the first drive 
And by the way, it was a beautiful drive going down the field with ease, and he held the ball too long. I thought the offensive line did very good. They gave him the pass protection he needed, but he waited just a little bit too long for a receiver to get open. By the way, a receiver was open. And that is even more of a knock on him because he should have saw him considering he had all that time. But it happens. It's a mistake. Quarterbacks makes make makes mistakes. It, it is what it is. No one's perfect. Um, and he and he got caught up. Strip strip sack. We you know. But after that, you didn't see that again. Allen played very smart moving forward. Um, so you got to give him his dues there. One mistake, I'll I could deal with that. All right, next up, and this one here, ugh. Stock down, special teams. Uh, despite a tough start to the game in which the Bills fell behind by 14 points due to the defense not being ready to play, that unit eventually locked in and stiff and stifled Arizona's offense enough for them to make a comeback. However, it was hard to watch the game and ignore Cardinals running back DJ Dallas taking a kick return 96 yards to the house in a game where Buffalo needed to make Every possession count. The part of the game, that part of the game has to be shored up moving forward. Um, listen, Smiley is a joke. Our special teams coach. I'm sorry, he's terrible. He's terrible. I don't know how he's still employed. I have no idea, guys. Um, and this goes back to McDermott because McDermott has certain coaches and players that he just – Wants them to be around the team, stick around the team, be on the team, come back to the team. <laughs> uh, if he if if he could, he'd have AJ Klein on the roster again. He'd have Josh Norman come back next week if he could. It's crazy to me. Smiley has been terrible. This special teams unit has been bad, and it continues to be bad. How about the kickoff from Tyler Bass? Out of bounds. Now, we don't know if Smiley told him to kick it to the left there. I get it. But it's he probably did. He probably did. And it went out of bounds. And it got the Cardinals to the 40. And a crucial part of the game. What are you doing? Just kick it out of bounds, man. I mean, I'm sorry. Kick it in the end zone then. Instead of kicking it out of bounds. What are you doing? I just don't get it. I don't get it. And that goes on Sean McDermott, too. He should have got up in his... Bro, no offense, man. Like, I, like, I, listen. May, maybe he shouldn't have gotten his face or yelled at him on a sideline. But I sure as fuck hope that Sean McDermott have a, had a conversation with Smiley and Bass after that game and said, what in the fuck was that? What are we doing here, guys? What are we doing? Do you guys not practice this all week, all off season? Do you not prepare for moments like this? And that's what you give me? You're you're killing me here. That's what I would do if I was Sean McDermott. Did he do that? Probably not. I probably gave him the game ball. I mean, I, it's mind-boggling how this guy is still the coach, the special teams coach here in Buffalo. Look, making my dog mad. You hear? Just me talking about Smiley. My dog's pissed off, so she had to leave. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, enough about Smiley. Or I'm, or, you know, my dog's going to go insane. I'm going to go insane. Look, she's still mad. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, stock up, Gregory Rousseau. Of course, stock up, Gregory Rousseau, Groot. This will sound uh, hyperbolic, but if Gregory Rousseau plays like he did on Sunday, he may be one of the front runners for Defensive Player of the Year award. Rousseau has arguably the best game of his career as he dropped three sacks to go along with six uh, total tackles on a day in which he ran uh, roadshod over the Cardinals' offensive line. Yeah, man. I mean, that dude was uh, on fire, and he's looking to get paid. And I think he deserves it. He is a guy we drafted, Brandon Bean. He was a, a guy that was sort of a project player coming out of the U University of Miami. He uh, didn't play the position long. He was a former basketball player. I think he 
tried out for tight end initially. I could be wrong on that. A receiver. They put him to edge his first season in Miami. He had 15 and a half sacks. Led the nation. Then, y'all know what happened in 2020. And he chose not to play. He opted out because his mom works for the hospital. He didn't want to have that. And, and that's his choice. So he missed a year of college football. Then he declared for the draft. And now I think that's what kind of put him towards the tail end of the first round. But the Bill, the Buffalo Bills and Brandon Bean still saw the potential in Gregory Rousseau. That's why they drafted him. I saw the potential. I'm a Hurricanes fan. Um, I saw the dude play. I thought the dude was legit. Uh, he just needed uh, to work on his craft a little bit more. And I felt like that was going to happen in the next level in the NFL. That's exactly what you're seeing. Um, every year, Gregory Rousseau has taken a step forward. I don't think he's taken a giant leap forward. But he's definitely taking a step forward every single season. I think this season, he's taking that leap forward. And I said it in the offseason. This is the year for Groot uh, to shine. And he will shine. Um, especially with Vaughn being back, too. Vaughn's helping. Believe it or not, and A.J. Epinesa as well, who's taken that, who took that giant leap last year, is going to help Groot out a lot more, right? Um, but, yeah, man, it showed, it showed yesterday against Kyler Murray, who, by the way, Getting three sacks on Kyler Murray is not easy, guys. I know you're thinking, oh, it's first game. It's, it's, listen, it's Kyler fucking Murray, who's very tough to get down. He's slippery as hell. That dude, it, 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 go ahead, name me another time where, where it was like, you know, this dude's getting sacked all over the place. That guy is just a nightmare to, to defend. He, he's just, he's that guy, he, you know, he's very mobile, very good with his legs and he has a good arm. Um, so he could kill you in both ways, but group getting to him three times and getting a sack, uh, fumble dude, you can't ask for more. What a great day for group. Uh, Von Miller, by the way, had one sack as well. So it was good to see Von, uh, get that sack. Uh, you know, something that Buffalo bills, bills, mafia, fans or bills mafia i should say uh has been you know hoping to see since last year um and i think you're starting to see that von miller is starting to actually uh be the von miller possibly of when we first signed him uh and you know that leg injury that knee uh you know is feeling a lot better right like he's 100 percent now and he's ready to give uh you know give it his all on the football field so shout out to von miller as well all right next up Stock down tight end Dalton Kikaid. Buffalo's offense performed well as a whole, so there is more or less a case of someone like Kincaid getting lost in the shuffle of the offensive flow of the game. But his lack of impact in this matchup should still be pointed out. Kincaid put up just 11 receiving yards on two targets. But given that Allen only threw 23 passes on the day, there wasn't much opportunity for Kincaid to make things happen. Better days are ahead of him. And I agree. I agree. I get why they put him on this list, by the way. I understand why they put him on the list. Um, because he didn't have a lot of impact in the game. But on the hindsight, it's true. Josh Allen only threw, th only threw the ball 23 times. And under Joe Brady's offense, I mean, he said it. He's been saying it all offseason. Everyone's going to eat. And... One guy may shine one week, another guy, another guy may shine the following week. It's just how it's going to work throughout the course of this season. Um, we don't have that superstar wide receiver, and even though I think Dalton Cade is is going to be a great tight end in this league, right now under this Brady offense, you can kind of see the writing on the wall. So I don't expect Dalton Kincaid to have. 11 yards, you know, or have these, you know, low outputs, uh, you know, as far as, you know, game logs, right? Like, I, I expect him to have better games than this. Um, matter of fact, uh, this Thursday against Miami, you're going to see a lot more, in my opinion, passing from Josh Allen and, you know, in a better environment. Because you got to remember, Sunday was really windy in Buffalo. Not very easy to pass. You could see the, 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 you know, Joe Brady wanted to run the ball, and that's what they did more than anything. Uh, James Cook, and actually James Cook had a good game. So, um, 
you can kind of see where that game was, you know, the, the, the uh, game plan was. And that game really wasn't a game where Josh Allen was going to throw for 40 times. Um, now, the Dolphin game, I could definitely see that. I could definitely see this being one of those games where Josh Allen throws 35, 40 times. And you're going to see Kincaid a lot more involved, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, stock down for this game, and I understand why. Because um, they pretty much had to <laughs> <laughs> do that. Uh, stock up wide receiver Keon Coleman. By the way, I said 100 yards and a touchdown. Damn, he almost got that touchdown. Uh, second round rookie pick Keon Coleman did not exactly uh, light it up on the football field on Sunday, but what he showed was that he was ready to con contribute for the Bills from the beginning as he led the team in receiving yards with 51 yards. Uh, what was more encouraging is that Coleman even had a play against the Cardinals that showcased how his size and athleticism can translate to the NFL game right away, uh, potentially allowing him to be a safety option for Allen when a play needs to be made. And, he, yeah, he made a great catch on the sideline there. And then Josh tried to hit him right away uh, for a touchdown. And it really was Josh's fault uh, because if Josh would have threw the ball better, that would have been a touchdown. Uh, but I think Josh got a little excited, wanted to get Keon his first touchdown uh, and just kind of misplaced the ball, you know. Um, but I think Keon Coleman, as the season goes on, is going to improve um, as a receiver. You got to remember, a lot of these rookies, the game is a little bit fast when they first get into it. Not every not every rookie, uh, you know, it, it takes off, you know, Boom, right? Like giving you these, you know, great week one, week two performances. It sometimes takes a little bit for the game to slow down, like I said, for them to kind of get familiar with their quarterback and all that stuff. I mean, look at Marvin Harrison Jr. He didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. Now, mind you, <laughs> Kyler Murray totally missed him at the end of the game. We should have potentially lost that game. If Kyle Murray was looking <laughs> at the end there, uh, he was wide open in the end zone, wide open. That would have been a touchdown. It would have been a touchdown. He totally missed them. Um, yeah, that was a, that was a blown coverage by Douglas, and we got lucky there. But other than that, Marvin Harrison Jr. He was a no show for the Cardinals, and he and I, I now listen. I still think Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best receiver coming out of college uh, this year, but it's it may take some time for him to get. Uh, you know, get familiar with Kyler Murray for the game to slow down a little bit. I mean, like I said, some players, it's it's like that. Uh, not every player just, you know, runs out the gate, you know, <laughs> super fast, right? It takes a minute. Uh, so Keon Coleman, man, I was, I was happy with his performance for sure. 51 yards, like I said, it's nothing that to wow over, but he made some tough catches, cont contested catches, which is the reason why we got him. Um, and I thought his route running was fine. I thought his separation was fine. Everybody was worrying about, uh, you know, saying he, he doesn't separate well. I thought he did fine. Uh, he actually got a pass interference on one of them. So he's, listen, he's going to be good. I think Keon, uh, he, we have no worries, guys. Bills Mafia, I think Keon Coleman um, is, is going to, we're going to look back at the draft and say, uh, Brandon B made the right decision by drafting Keon Coleman. I told you guys that in the offseason. When I said the Bills should draft Keon Coleman, and I gave him my reasons why, and yesterday it kind of showed you, right? Contested catches, that's why we brought him in. Um, so that's why we drafted him. All right, next up. Stock down, Edge, A.J. Epinesa. Uh, similar to Kincaid's entry in this piece, defense defensive end A.J. Epinesa did not necessarily play in a way in which he was uh, he was a de detriment uh, de detriment to Buffalo Bills defense as the unit was able to generate pressure on Kyler Murray throughout the game. However, it was disappointing to see him not uh, make more of an impact as part of a great pass rushing effort from the defensive line. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'm with that. I, I, um, I kind of agree with that. He was a little quiet, uh, a little quiet for the first game out. Um, I think AJ Epinesa will be just fine. I'm not. I'm not overly concerned right now. Week one, uh, but he does need to step up a little bit. He got the contract. We brought him back, so now you need to show your worth. But it's early. It's week one. 
I'm not going to stress stress it right now or say, we, you know, we should be concerned with that Vanessa. So, uh, and that is it. Now, I do want to give you guys um, a few others um, that's not here. Stock up, um, Mac Hollins. You know, I wasn't totally sold on him like Mikey was, my co-host. Um, I thought he was going to be a more of a special teams guy. But, man, uh, when needed, uh, he made plays, right? Uh, he got a touchdown. He got open. I mean, like, I think the guy's sure-handed. The guy has pretty good speed for his size. Uh, obviously, he's big and physical, which helps. Um yeah, I have a feeling that Mikey's right, and I think Matt Collins is going to be used more in the offense than I initially thought. Uh, so definitely stock up for Matt Collins. Um, I would say stock up for uh, Tyler Bass because he made all his, his field goals um, and on a windy day, but he kicked it out of bounds, man. So I'm not gonna even, I'm not gonna give him a stock down because he made his field goals and, and it was a windy day and yes, they still should be made. They weren't long field goals. I think one was 39. Uh, what was it? Let me see here. Let me check his field goal. So I'm not like telling you wrong things. So uh, Tyler Bass two for two, like I said, his long was 39 yards. So yeah. And the other was like 20 something. So he should make those and he did make those and that's fine. Uh, but kicking out of bounds, uh, at the end of a game where we need, or <laughs> where, where we need him to do, kick it right, he doesn't. And field position is everything, and he gives the, the the Cardinals great field position in a game where all they need, you know, a touchdown wins the game for him. So, um, yeah, I won't give him a stock down, but man, you got to be better than that. Uh, who else gets a stock up? Um, I want to give Von Miller a stock up, but I won't give him a stock down either because he got the sack. Other than that, you know, he was okay. He 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 almost got the Murray another time, uh, but it's good to see. It's good to see. I think he's trending in the right direction. Uh, stock down Ed Oliver, though I think Ed Oliver is a beast, and I think he'll play better moving forward. I just think he was. I didn't hear his name much. I, I didn't. I didn't see a lot from Ed Oliver in this game. Uh, let me see what his overall stats were as far as tackling and stuff like that so ed oliver yeah i mean i don't even see him on the yeah i don't even see him on the stat sheet so i i don't know if he did i don't even know if he made a tackle guys so yeah stock down ed oliver he just didn't create a lot of pressure um you know i thought daquan jones did better than him um but i expect I don't expect this to continue. I think Ed Oliver just had a bad game, and I think he'll bounce back um, week two or moving forward, really. So, But I have to give him a stock down for this uh, because of that. Uh, just was quiet in this game. Stock up Cam Lewis. Another guy didn't, they didn't mention they should have. Uh, had a, you know, big shoes to fill when Teron Johnson went out. Uh, and I thought he did really, really well. I really did. Now, today the injury report will come out on Tehran. I really hope for the best, man. Uh, anytime a player does not return, it's not a good sign. Um, Josh Allen also is the guy we need to monitor. Um, now, as you know, right, his left hand, which is not his throwing hand, but still <laughs> he uh, fell on it. Or when he scored that touchdown, he came down on it with his elbow. And uh, let's just hope it's not a fracture or anything, you know, like that. Let's just hope it's a bruise. Uh, it's just something that he's going to have to maybe just a pain management thing. Um, because, man, we have a game in four, three days, four days. So, like, um, yeah, uh, let's just hope for the best for those two, man. Um, you know, and we'll know we'll know today. We'll know today. So, uh, who else do I got stock up, stock down? Oh, stock up. Um for our new kick returner, uh, Brandon Connergan. I thought he played really, really good, man. I did. I I, I feel very com comfortable with him as kick returner and punt returner. He had the long of 53 um, on the kick return. He almost took it to the house. Uh, and the punt returner was nothing special, but I felt like it was safe. Like, I, I, feel, I feel like 
have this is like getting Andre Roberts back, but with speed, if that makes any sense. Like we're comfortable with him. Like we know he's not going to make a mistake. At least from what I saw week one, I am I am very comfortable with him returning kicks and punts. So uh I would give him a stock up because just because of that alone. Uh who else would I give a stock up or stock down to? I'm just kind of going through the, the, some of the players. Uh they didn't put James Cook on this list. And I'm going to put James Cook on this list. Um, I know I've been kind of tough on James Cook lately, uh, a little bit, not really tough, but just I have my feelings about James Cook as as a overall running back. Uh, but I thought he did well. Um, but I got to give the shout out to the offensive line as well because the offensive line uh, opened some massive holes for James Cook to run through. Um, so you, you know, I by the way, stock up offensive line. I thought they did phenomenal. I really did. I thought they run, run they uh blocked well for the running backs. Run blocking was good, pass protection was good. Uh Ray Davis on his few carries looked good by the way. Um but yeah, James Cook stock up. I have to. I, I you know, I can't be lying here. Uh I tell you otherwise. Um and that's it. I thought MVS did okay. He had the one catch, 19 yards. By the way, he almost dropped it if you go back and watch that play. Uh, but, but he, but he, but he made the catch. He's shaky, man. He's shaky. Dawson Knox caught one pass for 23 yards. I can't give him a stock up because of that. It's just one catch. Um, and if maybe if he had a touchdown, I'd give it to him, but, but he didn't. Obviously Khalil Shakir, we already said, uh, I already told you, um, uh, that Mac Hollins gets it. Curtis Samuel, I'm going to say stock down too. two catches, 15 yards. Now, I don't know if that's more on He just wasn't – he wasn't given more opportunities to be involved in the offense. I think he will be moving forward. Um, I just think it was the game plan was to run the ball out there, uh, get the ball out of Josh's hands quick, kind of. You saw there was really no deep ball, deep throws downfield. I think there was one to MVS and Josh overthrew it. And that's on Josh, by the way, because MVS was open. Uh, Josh has to get better at those deep – Deep, uh, deep throws, man. Deep passes. I don't, I don't know why he continues to overthrow his receivers on those, man. Because he didn't have a problem in 2020, 2021. So uh, even 2022, it just seemed like in 2023, he was way overthrowing people. Uh, you got, you got to. Uh, Josh has to figure that out. Um, but yeah, man, like Curtis Samuel, I, I was expecting a little bit more um, creativity from Joe Brady with. Curtis Samuel, uh, he's like a utility knife, right? Like a Swiss Army knife, that is. He could be put on the field anywhere on offense, right? Running back, he could be a running back, receiver, uh, anywhere. Slot, you know, motions, jet sweep, like anything. You could do pop passes. Like you could do a lot with that guy. And I felt like we didn't really showcase Curtis Samuel. Uh, We didn't showcase him at all. And, and just maybe it was just the game plan wasn't really uh, meant to in this in this particular game. So um, we'll see moving forward. I expect better results from Curtis Samuel moving forward. So that's my stock up, stock down. Um, guys, comment below. If you guys have a guy that you want to have stock up, stock down, put them on the comment section uh, if I miss somebody. Um, but by the way, tonight at 9 p.m., me and Mikey go live. And we're going to be uh, previewing the Miami Dolphins game because we play this Thursday. So normally we preview games on Friday night lights, but because it's a Thursday game, uh, we'll be doing that tonight. Uh, We'll also be doing a little bit more of a recap on the Cardinals game. We got our dog awards that we're going to be handing out tonight. So we'll be doing a little bit more of a a recap from, from Sunday's game. And then for the most part, we're going to be previewing uh, uh, the Bills Dolphins Thursday night uh, game. So, uh, I'll see you guys tonight. And as always goes, Bills, I'm out of here. Peace. And look at that go. He could go all the way. Touchdown. 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 The Bills make me want to kick your heels up and shout. throw your hands up and shout. throw your head back and shout. Come on now. The Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah.